In today's video, we show you how to delete your AFM displacement on demand and get that stuff out of here. She's a duck's guts. <laughs> All right, Saturday here at Clooney Garage, and we're working on the six liter again. Here it is. So you've probably seen us, we've taken the heads off our six liter. This is an L77 out of a late model VE Commodore Ute. Um, and it's the basis of our new track car build. So looking forward to that. The main thing we have to do though, is uh, we've sent the heads off uh, to Higgins to get refurbished and we're getting our camshaft ready. But before we do any of that, we've got to do some preventive maintenance. Preventive maintenance starts with getting rid of this valley cover, which includes the DOD hardware and solenoid valves that activates the, um, the lifters. And active fuel management displacement on demand actually means that there are spring-loaded um, lifters in there, so you're not your standard roller lifters. And actually at certain, you know, certain speeds and RPM and engine conditions, it actually turns off the um, four of the cylinders and uh, all designed for fuel economy and emissions and all that sort of stuff. Terrible for performance and terrible if you're going to go with a big cam. Um, the other thing I've noticed when I had my other L77 is that they're a notorious weak point for these lifters. They've got a spring design on them. I'll show you what they look like, but we'll get to that in a second. And now I've got a horror story to tell you about these things. The first thing is 13 mils to get this valley off. And then on our lifter buckets, little lifter trays here, that's a 10. So one, do all these and we'll, um, have a good look at the lifters. Good day. Good gear. All right. So you should have about 11 of those little 13 mils holding this thing in here. And it's going to be a bit hard with two here or one hand here. That just pops out like that. And that's all your little solenoids that activate the AFM there. Look at that. Very different to a standard valley plate. And we'll have a look in here. Well, there's our cam. And um, I reckon we got onto this just in the nick of time, just quietly. So we're going to have a good look and pull that cam out anyway. But yeah, you can actually see disaster sometimes when you look in there. But our cam looks really good, actually. All right, let's have a bit more of a look. So that's the AFM valley plate there. Bit of a bit better look. Still awesome condition, this engine. It's um, yeah, just done 100,000 Ks. And absolutely baby. Now this one was an automatic, so it actually had the AFM hardware not only installed, but it would have been activated as well. So no doubt these little lifters and those solenoids have actually been working their little lungs out. All right, so let's have a look at the lifters. As I mentioned, 10 mil on the lifter buckets, and we'll pull those lifter trays out and get the buckets, uh, the lifters out too. Uh, this is going to be good fun. One hand pulling out. The lifter buckets and the lifters. And you should actually get two of them out. Yep. So there they are. There, look, they look so different, aren't they? And they all have to pull the other two out anyway. But we're gonna have to replace the um the buckets as well, because these buckets are native to these particular AFM lifters. And I'll fish those other two out and get the other ones out too. Okay, how interesting is that? So actually half the lifters are the AFM ones with the spring on them. And then half of them are the standard roller lifters. I, I didn't know that. This is the first time I've done this. So I've had cars with AFM in it, but I've never done the delete myself. So this is a bit of a bit of a learning ex experience for young Fred. But that's all good. But these lifters, look at this. No wonder they fall apart. What a debacle. Anyway, I found something that was incredibly disconcerting. And one of these had a shard of metal in them, in loaded in the spring. And I've heard that actually the spring failure and the end of the roller are the, the failure points of these things. And of course, it's making a fool of me here because I now can't find it. Oh, there it is there. I actually had bits of metal loaded in the spring here. So um, I'm hoping we've dodged a bullet here because um, obviously it hadn't failed yet. Now, I don't know if you can see in there and see the cam. This is obviously another thing here too. The solenoid obviously is activated on this side where the spring um, loaded lifters are and ditto on that side and, and so on. So 
because um, the other lifters are actually the standard normal ones. So that is interesting. All right, so we're not going to reuse any of this. All this is getting it turfed. We're going to go with LS7 lifters that will probably look a little bit like this, just standard roller lifters, but um, no springs, no AFM. We're not going there anymore. Okay, so once you've done your DOD delete and got rid of your old valley cover, you need to get one of these ones. This is like a standard valley cover that you get with a normal 6-litre. Um, as you can see, none of the solenoids or valves or anything like that, just standard old uh, valley cover. And he will go in. And he goes one way. It's got that side up there. We're not going to fit it today, obviously. We'll not do the rest of the build. But a little fitting on top of the valley cover like that. And obviously we've still got our 13 mils to screw him in. But anyway, I'm going to just tack that in place anyway, because all the blocks are going to go into Gentech. Um, we've got to get this cam out. We've got to obviously do our new lifters. And um, when we get the heads back, the heads are going to have brand new valve springs, a um, bunch of new valves, CNC ported, all that good fruit too. But anyway, this is a short, sharp video to show you what's involved in the DOD. Um, in summary, new valley plate, new lifters, and obviously then get yourself a big cam. All right, that's a pretty easy job doing the delete. Hard bit's doing the install, but we're not going to do that just at the moment, as I mentioned. Anyway, I mentioned at the start of the video, how do you know that you're actually going to need to do this? And what are the telltale signs? There's three of them. The first one, and we're going to use Clooney as the little test bed here to show you what happened, is that at low RPM, probably, you know, less than 2000 RPM, on the passenger side, I would hear all this rattling um, and it wasn't like a death rattle or anything like that but it was definitely um, it went with the harmonics of, of the car and it just sounded like either there was an engine mount slightly loose um, but at a higher rpm the rattle would go away so i don't know whether the springs had a little reverberation in them now i know what the lifters are but this rattle at low rpm is what a lot of other people say too so that's the first telltale sign the second telltale sign is a ticking. And I noticed this up when Clooney was up on the hoist at Gentech and with these, these big headers, um, and this is when we had just the NA motor in it, um, didn't matter cold or hot, um, you just hear this, and particularly with, you know, like these ceramic coated headers, you hear this tick, 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 tick. Um, and that's why our thumbnail says tick, tick, boom, because you've got to, they're, they're more telltale signs that you've got to do something. <clears throat> and finally, and this is the worst thing, um, and this is, I caught this just in time too, cold morning starts, you press the button, as soon as the car fires, you hear a squeak, and, it, and then the squeak goes away. That squeak is the side of the, the roller of the lifter chewing the cam, and apparently you've only got maybe a couple of weeks once you start hearing that squeak before that little roller um, of the lifter dislodges itself into the motor and good night Irene you, you don't want that no good all right so there are your three telltale signs and I mentioned in another video all the cars that actually come out with DOD AFM hardware and it doesn't even matter if the software is disabled as you've seen the hardware is is bad you know those lifters are, are absolutely terrible all right on that note we're gonna go that's our second video in two days got another one coming tomorrow catch you later